Our full focus right now is on the urgent work of rescue and the hard work of recovery and rebuilding that lies ahead. Uh, yesterday I spoke with Governor Fallon to make it clear to Oklahomans that they would have all the resources that they need at their disposal. President Obama just minutes ago assuring that the people of Oklahoma, assuring them that help is on the way as a monumental rescue and recovery effort following yesterday's devastating tornado shifts into high gear. It is Tuesday, May 21st. Welcome to Lunch Break. I'm Wendy Bounds. Why, after a spring of modest storm activity, did we suddenly see a violent outburst of tornadoes like the one that blew through more Oklahoma yesterday? Lee Holtz, our veteran science reporter here at The Wall Street Journal, joins me now to explain you know, we've had this lull in storms, it seemed, and then suddenly this outburst yesterday. Can you talk a little bit about the factors that led up to that, Lee? Sure, and the question that you pose is the one that meteorologists and uh, weather watchers of all sorts are trying to figure out just now. Uh, the past 12 months, from um, May 2012 to this, this past April, probably the lowest period of tornado activity in U.S. recorded history, at least going back to the early 50s when our records are reasonably reliable and the lowest number of fatalities. Uh, that record, of course, uh, was shattered in a, in, a, in a horrific way in the last couple of days when we have suddenly seen this outburst of tornado activity um, uh, across uh, Kansas, Nebraska, into Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, according to the Storm Center uh, in Norman, Oklahoma, the National Weather Service is saying that we may be expecting more tornadoes later today, possibly some strong ones. Mm -hmm. Now, the question here is, as you say, you know, why now? Right. And the answer is, you know, no one knows. Tornadoes are among the most violent and unpredictable uh, weather events there are. I mean, they're sort of earthquakes of the air. We can tell the broad conditions that uh, lead to their creation. Thunderstorms moving uh, from uh, west to east what across the plains. What about a cold front? Cold air right. being brought down, sucked down from the polar regions in Canada by the jet stream as it moves across. Warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf. And it's the, the clash of these three things that can, under the right circumstances, produce a violent tornado. And, you know, they often have no more than 10, 15 minutes warning of one of these events. We're hearing EF4, that being the sort of measurement of this mm -hmm. tornado on a scale of one to five. Walk us through exactly what that means and, and what the EF stands for indeed. Well, the EF stands for, the, it's the name of the scientist, uh, uh, Fujitu, who uh, concocted the scale and they've modified it slightly over the years. Basically, EF4 means that this uh, tornado had gusts up to 200 miles 200. per hour, which as uh, the, your viewers have kind of seen the images, that's uh, strong enough to lift cars and trucks off the ground. Rip to bark off trees. Rip bark off the trees and oh. demolish even well-constructed right. uh, concrete uh, buildings. Now, it's important to emphasize that uh, perhaps only 1% of uh, the tornadoes we see every year are this strong. 80% um, of them are uh, too weak to even really register on this five-point scale. There had been some discussion, Lee, about whether this storm might be upgraded when all was said and done to an EF5, which is the highest level you can get. We don't know if that would ha will happen yet, but the history of EF5s, I mean, that those are particularly rare. Yes, they are, and, and in a very real way, you can sort of say what, what the EF5 rating means. Uh, capable of more than 200 mile an hour winds, but no upper limit. I mean, it's kind of the meteorological equivalent of just throwing your hands up in the air and going, oh my God. In terms of climate change, people wondering what, if any, impact that could be having on the severity of tornadoes. What's the scientific take on that? Well, it may be exactly the other way around. Again, nobody knows for certain because tornadoes as weather systems, um, as devastating as they may be on the ground, are in fact much too small um, to, and sporadic to be effectively simulated by the uh, computer models we have of climate. So the short answer is nobody knows. Now, uh, as it happens, this past spring has been unusually cold and uh, unusually dry. Right. Um, I think it's the coldest uh, in that part of the country since oh, 1996, 1997. Um, yeah. Now, as those uh, temperatures drop, they, of course, remove one of the key ingredients for tornado formation. 
is that cool season right. like the artifact of a broader climate change? The experts I talked to today simply shrug their shoulders and say, I wish we had better and bigger and faster and more efficient computer models. All right, we all do. Uh, as you point out, there is more severe weather on the way, and that region will continue to follow that and continue to come to you, Lee Holtz. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.